the back end of the cotton gun, fell out, bounced off into the ocean. So this is one of those times the magnet has to work because I can't get another one of these for weeks. Jordy, if this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on a pair of classic wooden motor cruisers in and around Victoria, British Columbia, along with my girlfriend Andrea and the loving memory of my pup Jordy. We're currently here aboard the flagship MV Jordy in beautiful downtown Victoria where we've just moved her down to her winter berth. And look, here comes the beautiful Coho coming across from Port Angeles. Anyway, um, but this episode is not about this. This episode is jumping back in time and getting back aboard MV Poem to finish up the foredeck and before that the windshield. But that pretty much wraps up the grunt work and then it's just varnish and then we can bring Poem down here for the winter. Okay, let's get going. And it's time to tackle the windshield. Well, of course, it needs refinishing. And there's some other problems I have to deal with here. And you can see it's complex because these brass strips, they'd either have to come off or I have to work around. Anyway, it does mean I have to take them out and Andrea is trying to do her schoolwork and such inside. So it's gonna be chilling a little bit dusty. center window is sealed in uh, so it just means lots more screws and I just have to do with that. See, that's why we use a reasonable sealant and not an adhesive. This is 291. It's a great sealant and you can pull it apart. bottom gap I actually didn't fully bed in um, and that's because if any moisture got into here behind this it would just sit forever in there this way anything that does get in behind will come down and drain out of here the way this is set up there's a little dam on the other side anyway okay Okay, now something that did go a little sideways last year was the connection between this vertical and this horizontal. There's a gap in here, very, very small, but over the winter and has humidity and temperature changes, this opened up to almost a quarter of an inch. So I need to put a fastener in here and I'm trying to decide how I'm gonna do that, whether it's a pocket screw here or a pocket screw here. Anyway, I, I gotta play with this a little bit. There's actually a bung here which is hiding the original fastener. Let's see if I take that out, I can see what's going on in there. It seems the fastener is right there. Nah, didn't exactly work. It is. Interestingly enough, a Robertson screw. And I'm able to get it out. Look at that. No, it's not. It's one of those combination Robertson Phillips. Anyway, got it out anyway. Hmm. So what I think I'll do, I'm gonna spread this a bit using the clamps and spreader mode, clean it up a little bit and uh, clamp it back together with some bedding in there and a new screw. Oh, there we go. 
I got that open a bit, enough that I can sand in under there. which I believe will fit. But first I'm gonna clamp it down a bit. And the only way I can think of doing that is to sit on the cabin top. A little tidy up. sealed herself in, so we won't get too much dust inside. Okay. Okay, with that looked after, you can probably see that I have an area that is yet to be stained, and that's because I'm still not done the foredeck. And the reason I'm not done the foredeck is because I've been waiting weeks for the Teak Deck System sealant to arrive, and it's supposed to come soon, but we'll see. It's a many step process, reefing out these seams. I've just sanded them as well as I can, cleaning both sides. But now I'm reefing them again just to make sure there's no debris in the bottom because I need a perfectly smooth, clean V joint in the bottom of the seam to be able to pack the cotton in there, which is the next step. So just making sure there's no little voids. <sighs> I've got a piece of cardboard over the hatch cover because I have a heater down in the forecastle right now 
because even though it's indoors, it's not very dry this time of year. So I want this wood to be as dry as possible when I caulk and pay it with the sealant in um, so that it's never going to shrink smaller than it will when I put it in. So the adhesive will never be, the sealant will never be stretched. Anyway, reef, 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 reef. Just gentle, make sure there's nothing in the way of the cotton. Being very, very careful to make sure this is all clean wood. We absolutely must have perfect bonding. Well, this is looking pretty good. Is it time to get some cotton in here? Oh. Okay, so here we go with the cotton and um, these edge seams are much bigger and much deeper and they have a hard bottom because they're in a rabbit. So I'm going to put a fair amount of cotton down in there first and then um, hopefully the top of that cotton will be sort of level with the cotton I bring out of the main seams and weave in a bit. Anyway, that's, that's the intention. So this first one I want to shove enough underneath with some sort of tool to get it down and under. There we go. There we go. Okay, I'm very pleased with that. Very, very pleased with that. Okay, pleased with that. Now I'm gonna start weaving in the main planks, but because there's no plank coming up to this joint, I'm just gonna start this one again, as if there was a plank coming along, and I'll just get that in and under. Okay, so at the point where the next seam is going to join it, I'm just going to tear it off so it's sort of tapered down. Okay, let's try this some more. Okay, now carry on. And tear it off. put a light on uh, down below in the foxhole so I can see where really really big gaps are where there's a risk of blowing through and I have discovered that I have to be very very careful uh, because this is not like um, caulking the hull of a boat which is soft wood and wet and uh, as a result very pliable um, and this is hardwood and it's very dry uh, and so as a result it bottoms out very quickly and if you hit it too hard you'll blow out and I did one over there and I do not want to do that again. We're getting to the end here. This is a good point um, to explain some of the techniques I'm trying to use here. I am no master at this, but I'm, I've, I've got a system going. Uh, in this deck, if you look below, I think I mentioned I put the light on so I could see gaps. Well, right here you can see a gap. Right here you can see a gap. Well, that means that I'm going to have to put extra cotton in here. Right here where it's nice and tight, I'm only putting a straight run of cotton. So basically right after this beam, it got to be a gap, so I started to knot it up a little bit. And you can see in the past, some of these have been good, some of these need to be knotted. Now I haven't finished off any of these, 
because really these should be done in this direction weaving in however I'm caulking the deck in this direction so once I'm finished down here I'll just weave them all in up to the end and be done with it actually other than one blowout this is going really really well and that was completely my fault I hit it too hard Okay, now this seam is a little bit different. This is sort of halfway between the tightest possible seam and one that needs to be fully knotted. So for this one, I'm gonna twist uh, the cotton. And in many ways, this is an ideal way to lay cotton in uh, because it reduces the number of sort of fibers of cotton that get caught along. If it's twisted, more of the cotton is going up and down and less along. So when you drive it in, you have less little loose hairs that have to be dealt with later. But it does mean it's a heavier, a denser roll of, of cotton and in some seams that's just too much. Yes, I could peel the cotton apart, but it's uh, starting to really uh, split hairs. In a perfect world, I would actually tape every single one of these seams, but I don't have the patience or the tape. And because I have to do some pretty significant sanding to bring this back anyway, uh, it's very easy to sand through the uh, cured sealant. But I will tape the edge here, even though I won't be able to uh, completely protect this stain. I'm sure I'll have to touch it up. Uh, let's keep from making too much of a mess of it. Okie dokie. Okay, this part isn't rocket science. Now I didn't make these seams very deep because to have a really effective sealant, it has to be able to stretch as the planks move back and forth. And if, it's, if the sealant is too deep, it won't stretch well. You want it to be relatively thin. But of course, I don't want it so thin that one or two sandings and it's gone. So it's always a compromise, always a compromise. Okay, now I gotta get busy. I was just changing a sausage and the back end of the cotton gun fell out, bounced off into the ocean. So this is one of those times the magnet has to work because I can't get another one of these for weeks. Oh, okay, little magnet, don't fail me now. The push rod uh, is steel. Everything else on this is aluminum, so my only hope is to catch the push rod. And it's oh, it's high tide, so it's a it's a deep. Oh gosh, <laughs> I can only barely reach the bottom. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, please, 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 please. Yes! 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's get this rinsed off and back into production. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. Okay, you stay on there. Another sausage. That was a little more stress than I need for today. Oh, 
reduce sanding somewhat. I'll remove the bulk of my excess here. Hello there and welcome to the Travels with Jordy Beer of the Week coming to you from the beautiful aft cockpit of MV Jordy in beautiful downtown Victoria. Okay, let's get straight to the beer. Now, I confess, I've had this before. This is an old favorite, but I couldn't resist. Yeah, he loves that We're one. having... Uh, Yellow Dog um, High Five Hazy IPA. It's one of the best hazies around. And uh, I'll pour because you have uh, uh, the pup there. Um, actually, one of our very first dates um, in Port Moody in Br in Vancouver was well, no, at the brewery. In the Lower Mainland. In the yes. Lower Mainland, right? It's not Vancouver when no, it's Port Moody. No. See, I don't really know much about Vancouver. I think of it all as Vancouver. Lower Mainland. It just goes on and on and it's on. Big, yeah. yeah. Anyway. It, Port it, Moody's it, beautiful though. Shout out to anyone in Port Moody. There you go. Okay. Well, and also a really great brewery. Yeah. All right. Well, I know how much you're going to like this, um, but give it a taste and yeah. then uh, we'll, uh, I'm sure you'll let me finish it for you. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Come on, if you like a hazy, imagine loving a hazy. Yeah, it's, it's not, I like it better than Fat Tug. But, <laughs> okay, uh, well, it's very hazy. Yeah. Fat Tug isn't quite a haze, but that's okay. So, who's the winner of this week's Travels with Jordy t shirt? Uh, 12 Stone Stacking. 12 Stone Stacking. Congratulations. Get a hold of us by shooting off an email at swag at travelswithjordy.com and we'll make sure you get your shirt. Cheers. We'd love to thank um, a few new patrons that came aboard in the last week, and they are um, Bob M, Malcolm Addy, and John Ryan. Thank you very much you uh, to you three. Very, very, very grateful. Mm. Yeah, no, I really, really like it. Okay, that pretty much sums it up. But I do want to talk about poem a little bit. You know, a lot of people think, why do we have poem? We have poem because we love poem and it's working out really, really well for us right now. And this episode is pretty much wrapped up the bunch of the grunt work and I'm so glad to have that done and have her home here in Victoria soon. Anyway, if you're interested in poem and you like that sort of thing, be sure to watch this episode up here, which is the first episode in the refit a while ago. And I think it's really interesting to see how far she's come. And if you really, really like this sort of thing, please consider subscribing and there's a link right up here. And of course, if you really, really, really like the show, please consider supporting the show through this link right up here. Cheers to you all. See you next week. Cheers.